The Democratic Republic of Congo, with its history of conflict, is also synonymous with eruptions of a different nature. It's home to Africa's most active volcanoes. Mount Nyuramangira celebrated the start of 2010 by erupting for the 42nd time since 1885. Sporadic volcanic eruptions have become part of life here. The Nyuramangira volcano is situated on a 9,500 kilometer crack in the Earth's crust, known as the Great Rift Valley. Any more eruptions and the DRC could become an environmental disaster zone. After Brazil, the Congo Basin hosts the second largest rainforest in the world. The recent volcanic eruption has destroyed large tracts of this unique ecosystem. The effect on people, crops and wildlife is difficult to address because of war, deforestation, poaching and lack of agricultural infrastructure. Karchu Karumi is the Director General of the Goma Volcano Observatory. He monitors acid rain from the volcanic ash in the atmosphere. It is having a negative effect on surrounding inhabitants. What we've realized, because we, we went up to Masisi, where the effects were a bit um, strong, and realized that people are losing everything almost, let's say their crops, their animals. And uh, simply because, you know, some people around those places, they do use uh, rainwater, rainfall water. They don't have water from uh, types. So what we have seen, particles from uh, Nyamulagira, they fall out down on the crops and they are completely destroyed. Karchu Karumi collects information from at least 10 satellite stations that monitor volcanic activity. Each station is equipped with electronic distance meters, strain meters, tilt meters, and seismographs. This equipment sends information via radio back to the Goma Volcano Observatory on an hourly basis. In 2002, Carte Blanche investigated what is considered the most destructive volcano eruption in modern history. Early warnings allowed 400,000 people to be evacuated from the city. About 45 people died from carbon dioxide poisoning and the weight of the lava destroyed buildings. 120,000 people were left homeless. After several months of seismic activity, neighboring volcano Mount Niarangongo erupted and destroyed half the city of Goma. Today, the devastation is still evident. Goma airport is barely functional with lava clogging the runway and the people and the environment are still being affected. About 40 hectares of um, forest has gone with this eruption. And at the same time, you can realize that animals have gone away. And probably some of them are going to be affected by these um, particles. It will take time for people to know exactly what has been the effect on uh, animals. The loss of crops due to acid rain has resulted in an increased dependence on poaching as a means of survival. Because of the most recent eruption, the protected silverback gorillas of the Virunga National Park are migrating to more dense areas of the forest, making it difficult for park rangers to track and monitor them. They could, once again, become the targets of poaching and the illegal trade of primates. Andre Boerter, chairman of the Game Rangers Association of Africa, says unprotected wildlife is usually the first casualty of war. With species like gorilla and chimpanzee, uh, there's a high uh, monetary value on those, uh, not just the setting of live animals, but even just uh, parts of these animals. In the DRC, the term poacher can be very deceiving, as members of all the military and rebel groups are seemingly also guilty of poaching. And um, then also some of the other wildlife, you know, with, with armies like that, that very often probably struggle as far as financial means are concerned. Um, they will go in and poach large numbers of animals to feed their forces. The Kivu province has vast biodiversity. But 25,000 government soldiers 
international peacekeepers, including South Africans, and of course rebel forces, are having an impact on the environment. Soldiers are allegedly often seen randomly killing wildlife with AK-47s. In addition, reports from the Lake Edward region in the Congo Basin accuse the military of hunting for bushmeat. Joshua Gambasu, chairman of the local fishermen association, is concerned about the dwindling numbers of hippos there. Now the regular soldiers are there. They are killed hippopotamus too because they haven't got a good salary. It's what uh, they tell us when we try to ask them about uh, that killing of uh, hippopotamus and other animals. Now they say uh, we are not receiving uh, salary at the time we need. Now we kill hippopotamus, we sell meat to people and there we, we earn our life in that way. Head ranger Jean-Pierre Jaboro spends his days fighting poachers intent on culling wildlife for profit. Like hippos are high, highly poached in this region and they, they use, of course, bush meat is consumed. Those hippos are for bush meat. When the poachers kill a hippo is for bush meat and get money. One kilogram of beef at the market will cost you three dollars. One kilogram of bush meat only one dollar. So it's no surprise that wildlife is hunted and harvested so voraciously. It's difficult to conduct surveys in the Congo Basin, but Thierry Bodson of the World Wildlife Fund has managed to complete one on the hippo population. About 20, 15 years ago, there was a a very important population of hippopotamus and uh, they've been massively killed for, for their meat and also for their teeth, for ivory. This population has basically dropped from 25,000 to almost 1,000 something. Statistics on the endangered northern African white rhino are harder to find. Yeah, the white rhino is, is, uh, is more relevant to, to the Garamba National Park, which is, uh, which is sort of in, in, a, in a similar area, but more in, in the grass felt type of habitat. And uh, it was the last place we know of that the northern white rhino still existed in the wild. And up to about 10 years ago, we believe that there were between five and seven animals left there. And we presume at this stage, due to the lack of reports by people working in that area, of sightings of these animals that they more than likely have been shot out and are now extinct in the wild as a species. There's plenty of conflict here in the DRC, but the only real heroes, apart from long-suffering civilians, are probably the dedicated game rangers who risk their lives for the animals whose rightful territory this is. There's not a ranger in that park that hasn't been shot at and, and that does not have wounds to show. Uh, from skirmishes that they've been involved in with poachers that came in to shoot some of the game. Even for us, as uh, park managers, we, we have no access to the um, integrity of the national park. We can't access where the, the rebels are located, then uh, it is a danger for us. If the current rate of culling continues, there will simply be no animals left for bushmeat. Despite the impact the volcano is having on Goma, it remains home to more than half a million Congolese who aren't phased by the rumblings and eruptions. The ash-ridden landscape is a stark reminder of how fragile life is in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Scientists estimate that it will take at least 200 years to restore the tracts of rainforest burnt by Mount Niamurugira's volcanic magma, provided, of course, there are no further eruptions. <laughs> <laughs>